Hey Judy, this one makes some great yard art. Hey Ryan, go big or go home. Don't go anywhere because we have a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. And while we still have some leaves in our yard, now's a great time to do some yard projects. Coming up in the show today, we'll be taking these leaves and turning them into some concrete castings. And also coming up in the show today, we'll teach you how to divide perennials. <laughs> but coming up first, Jan's Tips of the Month. Well, I'm with Jan McNeilan today, and Jan, even though it's middle of October, there's still some things we need to be looking at, isn't it? Plenty of things. Definitely. So what do you got? Well, I really enjoy uh, growing Christmas cactus. I've got about three colors, and I don't know variety names of anything, but um, at this time of year, even though it seems like if you're going to bring it in the house, you should, but I keep mine out as long as I can because these oh, new okay. buds are all over it, and the warmer it gets, it's going to... Uh, bloom sooner than I want it to. So I leave it out as long as I can until there's like a super hard frost or something and then I bring it in. All right, good um, idea. Yeah, and I've, I've done a lot of starts. I've got a whole flat of starts <laughs> over there. How and prolific. Yeah, and the other thing is that, and you guys, everybody that watches this show knows that every fall I take all the leaves that are falling and, and rake them into the pots that are all lined up on the south side of the house and they winter over really well, right now, even in October, where we get usually some leaves, we don't have very many yet. No, it's still early. Yeah, it is. But good insulator, so really keep them. Don't just put them into the compost or right. send them to the city because they're really good to have. Right. The other thing is, it hasn't happened yet, but it will. Between now, November, December, January, um, you'll see some bulbs coming up. Uh. And the <laughs> bulb itself, yes, some of the leaves come up, but the flower itself is still in the ground. And so even if it snows and they get coated in ice, they're still fine. Are they smart? Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're smarter smart. than we are, right? <laughs> for sure. And that's also, if you've got a bunch of bulbs now, get them in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, get them in the ground Perfect. and enjoy. Try not to buy too many at once like <laughs> I've done in the past. Oh, that's hard. Right. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, because, because of COVID, a lot of Master Gardener classes have been either online or cancel completely or whatever. So if you're interested in, in the Master Gardener program, I think the classes will begin again uh, in most counties or some anyway. So go online um, for either if it's Washington State, fine, you can go to your county extension or to OSU um, Master Gardener page and, and click on your county and see what they're doing if you're interested. I know that in the Metro Portland area, they're taking a form, you fill it out, and then when they figure it out, I guess it's in November, they're going to call you. Ah, so get your name in. Right. Really important because you want to be on that right. list. And I'm not sure that's the process for every county. That's why you just need to click Definitely. on yours. Do some research. Yeah. All right. And what else? The other thing is just that it's really important if you've got some... Um, some diseased plants, insect ridden plants, mm -hmm. whatever, to discard them and get them. Don't put them in the compost, put them in your, your uh, compost bin or, or garbage can or whatever mm -hmm. uh, that goes away from your property. Yeah, and don't start the, another problem for next year. No, because it, it certainly can, yeah. certainly can. Yeah. Anything uh, else? Well, I, I hear, I'm in the greenhouse with a lot of open fertilizers. So if you mm -hmm. have those, uh, make sure they're labeled and, and put them in maybe another Ziploc or something, but make sure you know what they are uh, and keep them dry for the winter. Yeah. Well, you know, Jan always has a wealth of knowledge for us every month. So uh, for more information, please go to our website or you can click over to the OSU and there's all kinds of information there. Yeah. Jan, thanks so much. We'll see you next month. All righty. At Blooming Junction, fall isn't about winding down, it's about getting ready. In the garden, start the next season off right, right now. Fall plantings produce healthier, more robust, and drought tolerant plants than those planted in spring or summer. In the kitchen, get ready for the holidays with fresh, organically grown produce from our fields. So whether it's for the garden or for the kitchen this season, 
Blooming Junction is your place for quality, uncommon plants, and produce for your home and garden. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Find everything you need for fall at Al's Garden and Home. Well, today we have a fun project we're going to share with you. It's making a concrete leaf casting. This is a great project you can do with your family or in your kids. And so what we're doing is creating these concrete leaf castings with the large leaves that we're collecting out of our yard. This is kind of a fun time of year to do it because our leaves have come up to size and are nice and big. And so when you're selecting a leaf, you want to choose something like this hosta leaf or other plants that are very thick and durable. We don't want anything too flimsy. And we're also looking for the ridges and the veins that are in these leaves. This is kind of what's going to give it the texture when we're, when we're casting our leaves. So the first thing we want to do is pick out kind of a nice uh, sturdy box. You can use a cardboard box. We're happy to use a plastic nursery tray. So this will give us some real sturdy flexibility. And so we'll line this with a little plastic tray because it's going to get kind of wet and messy. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of make a mold inside of our tray. And this is going to be the shape that we want our leaf to be in. So the deeper and more mounded we are, the deeper that casting is going to be or we can lay it flat, depending on if you want to just hang it on the wall. So we went through, we, we planted just a little terracotta saucer under here to help kind of build that up a little bit. And then we're just going to pile the dirt over the top just to kind of come up with, with the shape, overall shape that we want to do. So after we get our soil shaped in there, we're going to take a second piece of plastic. We're going to lay this over, over the top. And then we're going to take the leaf that we choose. So today I'm going to use this begonia leaf that has this really nice veining. And we want to make sure that when we're cutting our leaves that we leave an inch or two on the stem. This will make for a little handle that we'll use later when we're uh, kind of taking these apart. So after our leaf is on here, we're going to kind of just see if that's the kind of the shape that we like. And then once we do this, now we're going to start packing our cement. And so Judy's got, got the cement. She's going to show you the next steps. I get to do the messy part. That's right. <laughs> So what we use is this vinyl concrete patch, patcher. And so this is a really good kind of cement to use. It's really durable. And then your leaf can stay outside in all kinds of weather. It's really nice and durable. And so we kind of mix it little by little. So we don't want to put too much. So um, mixing it in here, I added a couple of these little cupfuls. And then you add water very slowly because if you add too much water at once, you make a big soup and you don't want soup. You want to make like make a concrete snowball or it's kind of like cookie dough for all you bakers out there, but you want a nice thick consistency. And so then you kind of grab it in your hands and then you go over to this leaf. So I'm using this alocasia leaf and I have to tell you, I did have a little rip in it and I wanted to use this one. So all I did was on the other side, put a piece of duct tape. So now I can use this leaf and the um, cement will go through the hole. So now I'm ready to pack it in. You want to start in the center and you really kind of flatten it down because you don't want any air bubbles. And so just kind of start in that center and go out to the edge and just kind of keep moving. And when you get to the edge, you do want to have like a little bit of a ridge at the edge and kind of mimic the shape of the leaf. But you, you want to have a nice shape there so that it just doesn't crumble at the edge. And just keep repeating that the whole length and width of the leaf. And we're going to be back in just a few minutes and it'll be all completed. 
All right, so almost done. And I think that maybe the cement is getting just a little dry. So just get a little sprinkle of water and put it over the top and then just finish up that padding. And if you do see a crack, it'll smooth right over. I think this is big enough. It's gonna be a little bird bath. <laughs> and then I think mine's small enough that I'm gonna hang mine on a wall. Uh -huh. So if we wanna hang it, now is the time that we wanna put a hanger on the back. And so what we've done is we've taken a chunk of a metal coat hanger and we've bent and curled this around and then we curved it up a little bit on the end so that gives us a little bit of room to hang it on on a nail and then what we also did is we curved in the ends so what this does is prevents it from pulling out of the concrete when it's done so it'll help kind of lock it in so once we have our little hanger made we're going to just kind of sink it into the concrete a little bit there and then we're going to take a little bit more of our mix and we're just going to kind of finish you know cementing that in a little bit like this so we'll pat it down. We want to make sure we leave this hanging out a little bit because that's where our nail is going to go. And then we can just kind of tap this in and pat it. And then those curves on the other end will prevent that from, from pulling out once we get this dry. So the next step is just to cover your project with a piece of plastic and put it in a place where it's out of the direct sun and it's nice and dry and warm, but not too warm. And then wait about one to two days and then the unveiling happens. So you just take it out of the plastic and then you just peel off the leaf and it should come out really easy. And you have your project and it's all done. And then once it's done and peeled off, you'll be left with your, your casting like this. And what you might want to do is take a small pair of like little needle nose pliers and go around the edges. You might have some real sharp edges. And these needle nose are nice because you just kind of break off any of those little rough edges. And then you could also take a, like a little block with some sandpaper and just kind of sand those down a little bit just to you know, make them smooth out a little bit. You know, this is a great project to do with your family and it's a gift. It's a gift for your garden and a gift for your friends. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges, to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for fall at Al's Garden and Home. We always tell you that fall is a great time to plant plants, but it's also a great time to divide plants. So you want to look for um, plants that maybe are overgrown or you want, to, you want them in another part of your garden or you just want to kind of rejuvenate the health of the plant. This hookah is looking just a little bit sad and so we're thinking it's just a little too congested here. So the first thing you do is you look for irrigation. So we found our soaker hose, it's right over there, but look for any kind of irrigation lines because you don't want to go through them. So we were careful when we took our spade and we kind of loosened this up right around this root ball. And I'm just going to kind of finish going around with this hori hori knife. And I'm going to just take a big chunk out. And it's best to do big chunks because you want a really nice viable plant to plant somewhere else. And look at all those nice roots. With hookahs too, sometimes they get very stemmy or very woody and they become little trees. So when you go to replant this, you could actually plant it deeper, just like a tomato, and it'll put out lateral roots and you'll have this brand new plant that'll push really nice foliage. 
So you might want to amend that soil. You want to do um, divisions on a cloudy day because if it's too sunny, you're going to kind of damage the roots, these fine root hairs that you want to keep as healthy as possible. And just kind of replant like you would any other plant and you have it to go in another part of your garden or share with a friend. Ryan's in another part of this garden and he's going to be di dividing another plant. Now, as we are evaluating which perennials to divide, we noticed that this Hellenium, you know, it came up and did all of its blooming this summer, but then it kind of died out in the middle in here. You know, it kind of flopped over and got big. So this is a good candidate to, you know, to do some divisions. We can already see, you know, this is the old growth uh, from the summer, and it's already starting to rejuvenate around the, around the plant. So this one, you know, died out in the middle, but we can tell that this is a good plant to divide out and spread. And so what we can do is we can go through, we'll kind of chop off all these old bloom stalks from the summer. You know, we can kind of get rid of those to kind of reduce the amount of, that needs to get, you know, trimmed off. And then this is a good choice for doing that. So we'll go through with our little hori hori knife. We can kind of just chop around here. And we'll just kind of lift this whole chunk out. So we can see that, you know, the roots are all in here. And so now we have this full, you know, chunk of helenium that we can, you know, divide out. We can put elsewhere in the yard or we can, you know, share it with our friends and neighbors. And so what this would do, if we wanted to, we could divide this in half and create two more. Or we can just leave this one clump. So now's a good time to do this because our soil temperatures are still nice and warm from the summer. So by getting this planted elsewhere in the yard or dividing it on these cool days and there's rain coming up in the forecast, we can plant it, you know, water it in real well, and it's going to get established now. So come next spring, we'll get a lot new growth and lots more blooms. You know, so there's hundreds of perennials out there. So the University of Minnesota has a great list that talks about all the different perennials and when a good time to divide those is. And we'll give you that link here on the website. So, you know, dividing your perennials now for in the fall for spring, that's a good thing. I'm out here at Portland Nursery Division. I'm with Sarah. Sarah, as we we're coming into fall, you know, we're evaluating our gardens. A lot of times there's things that we see in our gardens that have worked or don't work or and we have areas that we just don't know what to do with or we want to change mm -hmm. and you guys have a service for that we do we have a landscape design service and i would say this is the perfect time of year to start thinking about what you want to be doing next year because it there is some turnaround time on getting the design back and um if you plan now you'll be really ready when those first spring days hit so, you know, for you know, customers that come in that have areas that they kind of want to redo or start from scratch, mm -hmm. what, what do they need to start? Yeah, um, so I think first of all, just thinking about what you want with that space. I mean, sometimes um, there might be something there that maybe needs to come out or maybe it's going to be, um, you know, the backbone of your new landscape that you have there. But thinking about what you, what, do you want a cottage garden? Do you want something that's pet friendly, you know, um, water friendly? Um, do you want something that's just low maintenance or for social gatherings? So there's so many, like gardens are so unique, just like all of us and are a real reflection of, you know, a lot of ourselves in right. some ways too. So thinking about what you want and bringing in those pictures so that our designer can get an idea of the, the look that you're going for or the things that are important to you and how you're going to use that space with your family. Um, but also pictures of the actual space. So we okay. can figure out, you know, what, other existing things are there. Uh, what is it? What is that hideous thing that you're trying to create privacy from? Or right. um, we also need to know about the sun requirements and all that. So we don't actually go out to the property like some design places might. Um, it's all done through measurements and pictures. So okay. it's a more cost-effective way for homeowners who want to, who are fine doing the digging and the planting to still get that extra design help to really have that cohesive look. Okay. Um, and it's, we feel it's a really big service because if you go to an outside designer, they're gonna maybe have you running all over town looking for plants, whereas right. we've got what we need here and we're gonna design you something that we can, can get for you. Yeah, you know, cause our yards, they're, they're evolving and changing just like we do. You know, our lifestyles change and we're looking for different things and that's where you guys can come in and with your design. So mm -hmm. you know, if they're bringing in their, their pictures or kind of know what they want, or pictures of plants that they like that they see in other people's yards is probably mm -hmm. yeah thing walking that... around town if there's anything that's inspiring to you you know we can work with it and it'll be the more information we can have the better um, and like I said right now it's just a perfect time to start planting 
uh, right. or well, planning what we're going to be yeah, doing. planting and planning too. You know, both of them because you know as we see our yards that have, have changed from the summer and what works and what doesn't work, we can move things around yeah. and, and change it. So it doesn't have to be the static dynamic. So yeah. it's always, always moving and, and changing. And it is my favorite time of year to plant because you know those, those fall rains are gonna come and, and the plants aren't gonna have to deal with that summer heat, um, you know, newly planted plants, so. Right, because our ground temperatures are still warm. So when you're, you're planting and transplanting, you know, your roots are still getting developed. So that's why fall is a great time to get those yeah. plants in the ground. Yes. You know, so for more information on the design services they offer out here at the division store, make sure you come down to the store, you know, you talk to Sarah or any of the staff down here and get started on bringing in your pictures, you know, what you're looking for, and their staff can definitely help you get out in the garden and make that space what you need it to be. So Sarah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Welcome to the brand new Capital Subaru. We've taken a big step forward. We've built one of the most unique Subaru dealerships in the U.S. And we know you're going to love it. There's so much to see and do here, like shop at our exclusive pet store. And unwind in one of our amazing new lounge spaces. Or race through the obstacle course at our new dog park. This place is pretty stinking cool. <laughs> it's time to discover again with over 72,000 square feet just for you. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. What are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. Well, you know, it's that change of season and everyone has chores. Next door is getting their carpet cleaned. And then we are going to be taking care of our irrigation system. And I'm with Kevin McCallum. And Kevin, where do you work? I work for the uh, City of Lake Oswego. I'm the water conservation specialist. But we also are a member of the Regional Water Providers Consortium. So we partner with them in helping people manage their water better. Uh, and we're always talking with them about different things, but today we're going to be talking about winterizing our irrigation system. And the first thing on my checklist is the backflow. So what is a backflow? A backflow is an assembly that's placed in the ground and it's a health safety issue. It's, it's designed to prevent anything from your irrigation water getting back into the potable system. They use it to protect the potable system. If people were to use fertilizer or anything oh, like sure. that, it, it prevents it from getting back. It's also primarily the biggest expense if it goes south on you in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you really need to pay attention to. So at this time of year, do we have to turn it off? When you're done sprinkling for the year, the first thing that you want to do is physically turn your sprinkler system off. Most of them will have a valve to the rear of the backflow preventer. Okay, you just turn it all the way just off. Just turn it off. All right. What that does is that prevents if anything happens through the course of the year, if there's an accident or somebody digs with a shovel or something, you, you won't have water going out, losing water. All right. The next thing we want to look at is this backflow preventer. And if you look on these three, four um, test ports, mm -hmm. see these? This is where the backflow preventer um, tester comes in and certifies that your backflow preventer is working properly. That needs to be done every year. I usually recommend either at the end of the season or at the first of the season, but you want that tested and certified. You can go online to most of the water providers and they'll have a list of certified technicians. If you're not in an area that has that list, um, a simple web search for certified backflow technicians will get you numbers of people that can do that for you. Oh, perfect. And then I have some bubble wrap here, so are we gonna use that? Right, so the, the, we, we're not prone to really deep freezes in the Portland region. 
it can happen occasionally, but it's not, not real likely. So the number one thing that we want to prevent from freezing is this guy because that's the highest dollar sure? to fix. Okay. So I just use bubble wrap. I like it because it's, it's insulation and it also resists moisture so it doesn't hold it. Okay. And typically you just tuck this stuff in and around your backflow preventer and leave it loose. You don't need to tape it up or anything. You just want to get around that backflow preventer. So a couple layers there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just cover it back up and, and then we're put good your till valve spring. box cover right back on over the top. And what that does is that the, the, the heat from the ground is constantly rising and that acts as, a, as sort of a blanket that holds that heat in. We're good to go. All right. Well, we have some other things we're going to talk about, but they're closer to the house. So let's go over there. Okay. So Kevin, we're up near the garage, so what do we have to do here? Well, you want to protect all your exposed piping. Mm -hmm. So any of your hose bibs, um, any of your hoses you want to protect. So the, the easiest thing to do is just when you're, when you're done for the, for the year, mm -hmm. is just lay your hose out and drain it out. And you can see the water coming out there. Oh, sure. And drain that all out and then stick it in your garage or someplace. And then we have to protect the spigot too? The spigot as well. And so these are these are handy. You can find Those them in great. any big box store. They just cover over. You'll see inside is a little loop. Right. This little loop will go around the valve. Okay. It is flexible, supposedly. There we go. And that just hooks on there. This comes out here and then you have a, a tie. And just tighten it down. Just tighten it down. Wow, that's great. And that'll protect them for... And what about like the shutoff system, like where the automatic, all the controls, what do we do with that? Uh, you should, now that you got your back flush shut, you should just go ahead and turn off your controller now. That, the thing I want to emphasize though, is many people when they turn their systems off, they just turn the controller off. Really important to turn it okay. off down there too. All right, and what about gutters? I know that my gutters are full and they're kind of overflowing. The, the purpose of a gutter is to direct that water into the storm drains. If you get um, blockages and debris in there, mm -hmm. they overflow and they come down on your garden or the walls of your house and they make a big mess. So cleaning your gutter out, very good thing to do in the winter time. All right. And then what if we see like pools of water and it really hasn't rained a lot yet? Yeah, you, the first thing you want to do is check your meter. Mm. And by doing that, you, you just make sure nobody's using any water, everything's off and go down and look at that meter and you can make a mark on it come back in a half hour and look and see if that needle has moved. If that needle hasn't moved, you don't have a leak and that's probably subsurface drainage. Right, right. Well, he's given us so many great tips here and you know, there's always chores to go on this time of year. So really, if you need more information, please go to Garden Time. We can click you over to the regional H2O.org website and they have much more tips for you and to keep everything really safe and working well for you in your garden. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And you know, this time of the year is really great to get out and do those fall projects in your garden. You know, for more information on those projects or what you should be doing, go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Hey, Ryan, <laughs> you're lucky it's not the concrete leaf. <laughs>